Hi, I'm Paul Brody, and we're here in my shop. Mitch behind the cameras. Thank you for tuning in. It's by Laminate Day. What is by Laminate? Well, it all started. I got a I got a comment. Mike wanted to know more about by Laminate. This blue bike in the background, that's by Laminate. It started back in the 50s, 1951. It was Claude Butler who made it popular. He, he was good at, at promoting himself and his company. He made handmade bikes. Well, he didn't make, he had people working for him, handmade frames. And back in those days, they used a lot of lugs. These are lugs here. And the problem with lugs, not necessarily a problem, but it, it fits a certain size of tube and the angle is basically set. You can change the angle maybe one degree each way, but you're not going to change it much more than that. So it's kind of limited in a way. If you're building road bikes, 73, 73, well, perfect. It'll work fine for that. So what was happening after the Second World War? That's how far we're going back. Bicycle frames were often made out of lugs, and then they started the fillet brazing. And at that time, there was a lot of labor left over after the Second World War. It was skilled labor. A lot of people knew how to braze, especially women. So I've heard that at, at the Claude Butler factory, there was a lot of women who were doing the brazing, and that's cool. And so there was a, a time in history where a fillet braze frame was actually less money than a lug frame because after the war, you had a shortage of steel, so it cost money to make lugs. And there was a lot of labor around, and it was skilled labor, and it was cheap. So they made a lot of frames using... Uh, lugless construction, fillet brazing, and the advantage, I heard how this, how this came about is that on the road bikes they always had an inch, inch top tube and then some of the builders wanted to use a larger top tube, inch and eight, because there was less whip in a frame when you're going downhill fast, for example. So there was no lugs for inch and an eight. So that's when they started fillet brazing and the lugless construction using a, a bilaminate. So what is bilaminate? It's sort of like half a lug because it's often on one side of the tube and it's not on the other side of the tube. So I'm going to show you what, what I did to make this. So I'll clear the lugs out of here. And these are the tubes I'm going to use today. This is the head tube. It's inch and eighth, 1.5 mil. This is an old, well, not old. Well, it is old. Uh, a Columbus tube. I think it's oversized road bike. It's 858. Doesn't really matter. It's going to get mitered to the right angle, about like that. And then this is, is DOM tubing. It's going to make the bilaminate part, and I've saved this, see, a cardboard template, and I'm going to machine this down so that the head tube just fits inside, and then I'm, I'm going to machine the outside so that it's the right wall thickness, and then I take a felt pen, and I wrap this around, and I mark it with a fine sharpie, and then I have to cut it out carefully. Let's do it.
Look at that. Little, little bit of play. I like that. So what we do now is to turn down the OD. So it's a good wall thickness of, I don't know, 60,000, like that. Tracing. Like that. And then this is going to come over more because that's where the cardboard wants to go, like that. So the center is going to be right in between those two lines. So I need to angle this a bit more so that that connects up with, with the middle right there. Okay, we got the hole there. We mark this hole. I think the last time I did this was about a decade ago, something like that. Okay, can you see what's happening? This is going to be come up there nice and sharp. This is going to be very, very small in there, like a little, like a little knife point. Oh, we've got to fill this in. So we use a combination of a hacksaw, end mill, whatever works. So the first step is to drill the holes first. So the hole, these holes are actually on the small side. It's a quarter inch punch. The hole is actually larger, but this is the best way to mark it out for me. So we start the hole in the middle and then we make it a little, little larger because there's a little bit of a, a split there, an opening. If you look over on the bike, can you see how it's open right there? That hole is a lot larger than one quarter inch. So that's basically what, what we're working on. What I want to do is to save some time on the mill. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut across like that. All right, let's go to the mill now and we need to do milling. We're gonna drill the holes now. I'm using a center drill and then when I've got that in the middle of the, the red Sharpie line, I'm gonna put the drill through. It's almost 3 8 One size under 3 8 Let's see what happens here. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Now to belt sand. That's what it looks like. It's kind of spiky. We're going to smooth that out, make a nice point on the top there. I don't want to do it with the end mill because if it catches, it'll rip possibly. So, looking okay. Let's see what happens. I got a sander. I don't use this one very often. I look for a new belt, don't have a new belt. So, a bit worn out, but we'll see if it works. I like it because it's, it's small here. It gets into places better. We'll see how it works. Okay, this is the tricky part to get that space just about right. Okay, so I think we're getting pretty close now. We're looking good there. Just two little tacks, that's all we need. And that's what it looks like. That is bilaminate. Basically half a lug, isn't it? Because the lug goes around the head tube and there's no lug on the down tube. I like that. Nickel silver rod, do a little preheat, do a little bead around, and the fillet brazing is last. We're going to go all around the lug, the fake lug. It's a little slow coming up to heat here, don't have a huge flame. But it's starting to flow now. Oops. It's a thin tube. It heats up quite quick. And this, this is a big lump here now. So now I'm going to go around here and make sure that the head tube is nickel silvered into the lug. Let's 
flowing quite nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna go around the lug and see how that works. So I want a very small fillet. This is very, if you get too much on there, it's very hard to file, very hard. So don't wanna do any filing. So that was a bit much, so I'm going to flow it around now. Can you see it flowing? So I don't have the torch super close. What is that, like five-eighths of an inch away? 16 millimeters, about that. I got a little extra in here now, so I'm heating up this part and it's gonna suck it in. It's capillary action, that's what it's called. So if you heat it gently, Hopefully you can see it moving. Did you see it moving? I hope so. So this on the point here, what I'm gonna do, because that's easy to burn away, so I'm gonna put some nickel silver right onto the point and then flow it down, because that's the best way of avoiding the overheating on the, on the point of the lug. Here we go. I'm going to try and put a blob there. Okay, so I'm going to flow it in now. And that looks okay. Let's see if we can continue this. And the hole, here we go. And it spilled over, but that's okay, I can file that. It's when you get extra on the inside, that's hard to get out. Okay, there's the hole. And we are round, so now I, I do the fillet raising. And I think that's it. Come around full circle now.
a pile will make it flat, whereas the other tool it might not make it flat. spot can you see that little low spot right there that's the part that's hard to get because it's right on the top the belt sander doesn't want to get in there so that's why we do fine fingering and I think it turned out pretty good I haven't done this for a long time so I'm glad I didn't have to start over for some reason Actually, that's what the paint is for. There's a saying in the frame building industry that every frame builder needs a good painter because the painter, they can hide a lot of little imperfections that you never see. But I would say that we are done here. I hope you like this. Mitch and I like coffees. If you buy us coffee, it's much appreciated. It helps the channel to grow. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. See you next week.